What? Okay, time also to like that. Okay. Hello YouTube, Satch here, how are you guys doing? Well, I finally got around to watching the Madoka Magica movie. Yeah, I'm sorry guys, I actually didn't intend to make this a live reaction, everything being so busy took so long. Sat down to do a live reaction to it, and it and I'm just not lucky, I guess. It happened again, you know, I took the time, sat down, watched the movie, recorded it, it was fun, and then the sound disappeared on me again. This happened once with uh, like my live reaction, I think it was episode 4 of uh, No Zero, it's happened before, and it happened again with this one. Yeah, it's just me reacting and absolutely no sound, so it's worthless. Yeah, so I'm sorry about that, it's just not my luck, it seems. Ugh. I need really need better equipment. So, might as well just sit down and make a review. Sorry. <laughs> But hey, I have to say, I loved it. It was, it was a great conclusion to the story. Granted, it's not a happy ending kind of thing, but hey, everybody is happy enough. <laughs> Honestly, when it all started, I had no idea where they were going with it. Everyone was back. Kyoko, Mami, Sayaka, Madoka, everyone was back. Uh, Homura was the new kid again, so... Uh, yeah, I was really confused about what was going on. It seemed like a whole new timeline kind of thing, but you no, know, witches aren't supposed to exist anymore because of Madoka, so she shouldn't be there. And also, they're supposed to be fighting Wraiths, but instead they were fighting these nightmares. And we even saw the whole thing with Hitomi being frustrated with uh, Kyosuke, <laughs> and then the frustration gave birth to the nightmare that you know kind of threatened everyone. But hey, the girls, Mighty Morphin, powering it together and took care of it. It was cool. But yeah. Like I said, I didn't know what we were taking with it. I was, in the beginning of the whole thing, I was confused as to where in the time, you know, where in the continuity this story was actually going to fall into. That was until <laughs> Komura totally got Kent back to how she was. Yeah, that's the thing. She was how she, she was in the beginning. That shy, you know, very insecure, kind of antisocial. But that was, yeah, that's the thing that also put me back. It, all, it made me think like maybe this was an earlier timeline. You know, before the whole thing that happened in the series went down, but no, she was actually Clark Kent in the whole thing. She was just acting out. Then <laughs> took off her glasses, unwrapped her hair, and went back to the cold, efficient Homer we always knew and loved. So yeah, she just mentioned she did, you know, suspect some things were weird, and we were. It was nice to be taken along, to, you know, for a ride with that. And I like how you know, right in the middle, she just confirmed that yeah, everything that happened in Madoka Mag Magica actually happened in Madoka Magica. Which is why this whole scenario that we're in so was kind of weird. And, well, she suspected Bebe. And that was the thing. Bebe. That's an... <laughs> I don't know what to call it, but it's sort of Mami's pet. But that was also the same witch that bit her head off. So it was weird seeing them get along. And they got along so well, they were cute. Mami still had the same handoffs that she did in the beginning of the series. How, she, you know, she puts up a strong front because she's really lonely and she wants to, you know, appear strong for the others. She still had that front. I was even afraid it might be a dead flag when she brought that up again. Uh, yeah, uh, Homer was suspecting Bebe because she remembers everything about, you know, Madoka and everything and knows that things are not as they should be. And that was her first suspect that she was a, that was a witch. That, of course, got her the conflict with uh, <laughs> Mami and what a fight. That fight was awesome. That was... Seriously, bullet dodging, you know, equilibrium with, uh, <laughs> yeah, it was just, wow, it was amazing. And what it made even more amazing was the use of Homer's, you know, whole time stopping thing. Uh, Mami said that there's whole strength here, so she can keep, you know, in the same, keep in sync and fight. And they would, every shot they, you know, they fired up actually stopped at a certain point, and then when Mami, when uh, Homer did the thing, bullets were ricocheting everywhere. It was, that was an amazing fight scene. Really, it was amazing. <laughs> anyway, uh, it, was, it was a real surprise though when we found out what was actually happening. Uh, she felt despair. She really, our soul gem got darkened. She was about to become a witch. But Kyubei, the incubators, just had to meddle again. 
sort of put her in stasis so that they could study the whole thing because he did, he did tell him about how things were with the whole witches and everything and how Madoka was, you know, you know, intervening in that from now. And did you realize that that was an amazing, you know, a huge amount of energy, you know, the whole uh, emotional balance between hope and despair. And I think they really want that back. They want the whole system back. That's why they put the whole thing under the spell. Sort of, you know, absorb it, see if they could control Madoka somehow. But first they had to, con you know, confirm her existence, which they did. Anyway, yeah, she basically was supposed to turn into a witch. And that entire world was actually her labyrinth. It was... Yeah, that's why we kept seeing all those psychedelic weird things happening around. Yeah, but it seems, you know, it's really complicated because she also pulled in real people into it. Yeah, Mami and everyone are actually real. They're not pigments of our imagination. They're real, they're in there, they're stuck. And, well, you have to rescue them. She actually voluntarily turned herself into a witch just to, you know, cause a conflict that will bring the other magical girls to come and, you know, save her. And they did. Madoka accidentally even got stuck in there because she came in to do her thing with the law of cycle, that's what they keep calling it. Where the, yeah, you know, she takes the grief seed, and she takes the soldier and put it into grief seeds and take them out of the equation so they don't turn into witches. And that's how she got stuck in there. <laughs> it was weird. Anyway, what can I say about the whole witch battle? It's as, you know, visually sporadic as it's always been. <laughs> you can. It's not always easy to tell what's happening, but still some cool scenes in there as well. But it's what Hummer did at the end there, when she grabbed, you know, when she grabbed Madoka and whatever she did sort of took a piece of her and wow, that was a total 180. I, the movie was trying to finish there, but you couldn't have to leave that that happy ending. Homura just had to have her piece of Madoka, because let's face it, she's gone through over a hundred timelines. She really wants. She, she deserves hers. <laughs> so, <laughs> I think mean, it was really confusing figuring out what she did there. But basically, she sort of turned herself into the antithesis of what Madoka is. If Madoka is sort of the god that's bringing hope to witches, she decided to become, you know, the devil, evil. <laughs> and well, you know, Sayaka coming back was actually sort of a uh, like a. Uh, uh, secretary to Madoka, also Baby as well, but now they're being ingrained into this whole new timeline and they can't do anything. They can't raise a finger to Homura, she's too powerful. I mean, that's just a fraction of Madoka's power, but damn, she's way powerful. Yeah, I have a feeling that, you know, the rule of the law of cycles still applies. Madoka is still out there turning soul gems uh, before they uh, turn into roof seats, but just that tiny piece of her, she didn't mention it was just a piece of Madoka that everyone forgotten. That she took, and she, I'm pretty sure she's aware she's on borrowed time, because eventually that piece is going to remember what she's supposed to be, and that whole thing is going to fall apart. That's the way I look at it, anyway. But yeah, and yeah, that ending scene. It seems Kyobe finally got his. <laughs> so that's something. So like I said, I really did love it. It was amazing. I liked it. It, it was great. It was a nice conclusion to the series, in my opinion. Anyway. I'm not. I'm pretty sure some people didn't like it as much. <laughs> oh, but hey. I did, I liked it, it was cool. So, yeah, like I said, I really did make a live reaction for this, but then it just fell apart like this, sorry about this. You need to be more careful with this stuff. Anyway, um, please, no suggestions on what I'm going to watch next. I'm going to make a whole anime discussion video about that, then we could talk about what I'm going to choose next there. And, uh, well, join me for that. See you guys next time.